In this tutorial, we will learn about geometry nodes, why they are used, and how they are used. This is a very powerful tool in Blender, and you can really do some amazing things with this. But this one is a beginner's tutorial, so we will take a simple case. Our focus would be to cover the basics, like how to set up these nodes, how these input and output fields work, or how you can reuse one geometry node for multiple objects. We'll look into more advanced uses later, this is only a foundation level tutorial, to begin your journey with the geometry nodes. So let us start with a blank new file. We can delete this default cube and instead of that, let us add one, monkey. Geometry nodes are used when we want to modify the shape of an object, or when we want to create a completely new object, from some basic structure. For example, here we have shader editor, which we often use in order to play with the materials. Similarly, this geometry node editor can be used, in order to play with the geometry of an object. We can do many things that we traditionally do in the edit mode, or things that we often do, by using some modifier. So many of these modifiers can also be implemented by using some suitable geometry nodes. There are some advantages, like the node setup is non-destructive, so you can freely experiment. Let us take an example, we have a modifier called subdivision surface modifier, that can subdivide any given mesh surface in order to make it smoother. But we can implement the same functionality, using a geometry node setup as well. We'll look into that example, so let us first remove this. And we need to split this screen, or maybe we can reuse this timeline editor. Either way, somewhere get a new editor, and then change this editor type, to geometry node. By default, it will be blank, there won't be anything at all. You can press in, to hide this side panel. Now press on new, so that a new node tree is created here. You can see a group input node, on this side, and a group output node this side. This group input node, gives us the current geometry of the selected object. Then we'll do some change, or some modification over here, with that data. And finally, we'll send the result to this group output node, which will be visible here real time. So you'll always have these two nodes, as a starting point for any geometry node setup. You need to then add your own nodes here, in this place. Since we want to add subdivisions to this, we have to go to the Add menu. Then under Mesh, pick up the node called Subdivision Surface. If you place it here, Blender will automatically connect them. And you can see that some subdivisions are created on our mesh surface. We have a field called Level on this node. If you increase this, the number of subdivisions will increase for our object. This is probably the most simple example of how to add any geometry node. And you can see, as we added this node, Blender has created a new entry for our monkey in the Modifiers tab. There is actually a modifier in the Modifiers list called Geometry Nodes. Whenever you add a geometry node, this modifier will be added for the selected object, and its settings can be modified in this editor. Now let's say, you have added another modifier, maybe a bevel modifier. But as soon as we added this second modifier, the details of our geometry nodes completely disappeared, that is because, currently this bevel modifier is selected in the modifiers tab. This blue line appears around the modifier that is currently selected. If you click on this geometry modifier and make it the active selection, the corresponding node details will get visible. So you have to select the geometry node in the modifiers tab, Otherwise the details won't be visible in the node editor. Or, you can also enable this pin button, it will then always display the details of this geometry node. It will remain pinned, so even if you select some other node, or another geometry node, it will continue to show the details which we pinned. Now, the obvious question is, why do we use such a complicated process, with all these geometry nodes, for such a simple task, when we can directly use a subdivision surface modifier for this? We'll discuss that now. Let's say, we want to apply subdivisions to a specific part of the mesh, not on the entire mesh. So we'll probably go into the edit mode and create a vertex group by selecting some specific area. Now we want to subdivide only that particular area, not our entire object. But currently, this subdivision surface modifier does not have any such vertex group as an input, so we cannot really do this from here. However, we can implement that, using this geometry node, where we can pass a vertex group, and the subdivisions will be applied only on that part. To do that, we need to take the existing geometry of the target object, and separate out the selected part. 
So go to this add menu, and from the geometry group, you have to add one, separate geometry node. Place it just after the input node. This will give us the selected part, which will then go through this subdivision surface node. And finally here we'll get the output. Now, we need to create a vertex group by selecting some part of this object. So go to the edit mode. To select everything, let us turn on the X-ray selection mode. We'll select one half of this object, like this. Let us assign these to a vertex group. So go to the Object Data Properties tab. Create a new group here. We can rename this to Group 1. Now click on the Assign button to assign these selected vertices to this vertex group. The X-ray mode can be turned off. Let us go back to the Object mode. So we got a vertex group created here. But we need to actually pass it to this node. We can do that by using this input socket or this selection parameter. In order to pass this vertex group to this input socket of this node, we need to simply connect this input socket to the blank socket of our group input. You'll see that a new socket is created called selection. And at the same time, in the modifiers tab, we got a new input field, and it has that same name, which is selection. But we can probably give some better name to this through this side panel. Switch over to this group tab. You have the list of all input fields, let us click on selection. We have the field name over here, which you can change. Let us change this to, maybe vertex group. You'll see that this input field is also renamed to vertex group. And we have the same change in our input node as well. You can hit N to hide this panel. So, this is how we can customize the input fields in any geometry node. We can now pass any vertex group through this field. But this field accepts only an integer value, which does not help us, so you have to click on this cross icon. Then you can select a vertex group, like we can select this group one. And as a result, we can see that the selected portion of the mesh got perfectly subdivided, just like what we wanted. But we lost the other part of our mesh. That is because, here we are taking our selection as an input field, and it is then getting separated from the mesh object, which is getting subdivided here. And that's what we are getting in the output. But this other half of the monkey is not actually lost, it is very much available in this inverted field. So we have to add this field, which is the inverted part, into our final output, in order to get back the entire object. We'll basically join this subdivision output with this inverted part, which will then go to the group output. It's like a simple math, but we are doing it with the geometry. So we have to add another node from the geometry group, which is called Join Geometry. Place it between these two. Now connect this inverted part to this input socket. This socket can take any number of inputs you connect. It is not limited to two or three. It is like a bucket. You can add multiple geometries together. So we got our mesh back, as the two parts are now together, but there are some gaps in the middle. To rectify this, we have to change this field which currently has point, here we have to select face. Now the entire mesh will be back. But we are not done yet with this model, because it does not look very impressive, with one side as smooth and another side unsmooth. But the beauty of this is, you can even change the selection anytime. Let us say that we want to apply the subdivisions only for the eyes, and the rest of the mesh should have flat faces. Let's go to the edit mode. We'll first remove this selection. So go to the Object Data Properties tab, and click on Remove, to remove these vertices from the vertex group. We'll select just the eyes. So turn on the Face Selection mode, and select any one face here. Then go to the Select menu, and under Select Linked, go to Linked. So all its linked faces will get selected. We'll do the same thing for the other eye as well. So go to Select Linked, and Linked. Now both the eyes are selected, so click on this Assign button to assign them to this vertex group. Let us create another vertex group, and we'll rename this one to Group 2. Now go to the Select menu, and select Invert. We'll assign them to this second group, so click on Assign. Now everything other than the eyes will remain in this group. So back to the Object mode. You can immediately see a change that these eyes got subdivisions, but the rest of the mesh is flat. That is because, currently we have the vertex group 1 selected in our modifier. But you can invert this behavior. 
In the vertex group dropdown, we have to change the selection to group 2. Now the entire mesh will get subdivided, but the eyes won't, the eyes will be flat. So this way you can control which part of your mesh receives the desired result in any geometry node. And you can also add another input parameter to control the subdivision level here. Just connect this level field to the empty socket of our group input node. It will create an input field, and the same will be available here as a new parameter. By using this, you can easily control the level of subdivisions for the selected part of our mesh. Really cool. Let us give a better name to this field. So press N to bring this side panel and then select the level field. We have to type the new name here. Maybe we can call this as sub D level, since it will control the subdivision levels. A meaningful name like this will be very helpful when we reuse this modifier for another object. You can also change the name of this geometry node, but you have to first unpin this. Now you can rename this node. Sub D selection can be a suitable name for this, or you can use anything. Now we'll discuss how this same node can be used for some other object, so let us hide this monkey. We'll add another object, maybe a torus. We'll use the same geometry node to create subdivisions for some selected part of this torus. Let us go to the edit mode. Turn on the vertex selection mode. To select everything, and we can turn on the x-ray selection. Let us select any one half of the torus like this. We'll assign these vertices into a new vertex group. So we have to create a vertex group and assign the selected vertices. Now back to the object mode, go to the modifiers tab. Then we have to add one geometry node. And from this little dropdown, we have to select the sub deselection modifier, which we only created for the monkey. It works like materials, when you create some materials and reuse one of them, it's just like that, we are using existing geometry nodes, which we created earlier. By default, the entire torus got subdivided, and hence it's smooth. But we can modify this by changing this vertex group. So click on this icon, and then select our vertex group from here. Now you can see, the selected half of the mesh got subdivided and smooth, while the other half is left with flat faces. So this way you can reuse any geometry node, or in a sense you can create your own version of modifiers, and apply them on multiple objects. That's why the geometry nodes are one of the biggest things that ever happened in the history of Blender. You can also experiment with these nodes and be creative. Let's say we want to extrude this inverted part. So go to the Add menu, and then under Mesh, add one node called Extrude Mesh. Then place it right here. And we get some funny things like this. But we can reduce the effect by changing this offset value to 0.1. Now that looks something attractive, right? We can also add subdivisions to this. So duplicate this node and place after the extrude mesh. Cool. Now we get some artistic eyes for our Suzanne. So there are unlimited possibilities with geometry nodes. It is a very useful and very powerful too. We'll look into more advanced use cases in our future tutorials, but one caution for you. This is one part of Blender which is still in its early days, so you'll see many improvements to the node structure in the future. And it is possible that some nodes may change tomorrow. However, it should still work as a foundation-level tutorial. I hope you liked our presentation today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.